This video is to address all the people who have like lost loved ones and have gone through fucked up shit and all this other stuff. Um, this whole this whole argument and uh, there's really no way for me to say any of this without being an asshole. So I'll do my best and I'll just deal with the heat. I'm not trying to be an asshole. I apologize in advance. Um, all the stuff that 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 makes people go, oh, life is fucking miserable. This place is fucking hell. Um, this place fucking this. There is no God, um, all that, all that shit. This will never be anything good, right? And now they're now they're stuck in miserable lives that don't make sense, but horrible things have happened, and that's all they that's all they know. That's all they can trust is that horrible things have happened. Um, there's a couple of things that I I like to do. Now, some some might say that I haven't gone through anything truly traumatic. Um, you know, I'm not sure if that's true. I feel like even when I go through traumatic things, I do a pretty good job of like just kind of moving past them. Um, but anyway, um, all the people that like want to see me like go through something, that want to see me suffer, that that think I haven't suffered yet, that think I haven't gone through anything, and that personally themselves want to want to host, facilitate, and see me go through a horrible experience that'll break my real life, my optimistic point of view. It'll make me realize that life is just suffering and it doesn't matter what you want. It doesn't matter. And I'm not, I'm, that's what I'm getting in trouble for. I'm not trying to taunt anybody here. Because um, I, I genuinely do understand. I, I think I, 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 I sympathize here. Um, the first thing I want to say is this is tough to know where to start from. The first thing I want to say is um, there's a water bottle. I'm fucking I'm thirsty. First thing I want to say is, uh, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to get distracted. I'm trying to be polite here. I'm not trying to be rude, I'm so sorry. Um, when it comes to real life, the things you've experienced, I apologize for. I, 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 I'm sorry that you've gone through those things. I'm sorry that there is no explanation for why you had to lose someone, for why horrible things had to happen to you or someone that you love. I'm sorry for all of that. I don't know, I don't know what to do. I, I'm trying to figure it out. Um, and, and it's not my responsibility, but it kinda, it kinda is because I'm the one saying all this shit, right? I'm the one that's, that's selling people these ideas. I'm the one that's giving people this kind of hope. So it, it's important for me to be responsible and, and address these things. Um, it, in my opinion, death can occur for a number of reasons. One of the reasons that I, I like, one of the reasons that make me feel comfortable is whenever you stop making sense to people around you. If you haven't noticed, people tend to monkey out when they don't understand things. And so what I think is there's something about the concept that we are all accepting, whether we chose it or not, whether we chose it or we just ended up in it, um, just by like, by maze living, by the maze of life, we just accidentally ended up in the concepts that we're experiencing. Um, experiencing, experiencing, I did say it right, why did it seem like I said it wrong? That one of the ways that people can comprehend you leaving when you don't make sense to them is just by you dying. And and think about it like this, a lot of people spend their entire lives, and, and we're talking about, I, I gotta walk around for this, we're, oh, camera's on the bottom, damn. We're talking about people who spend most of their lives, you know, I am gonna walk around. People who spend a lot of their lives, um, accepting, you know, bullshit. They accept a lot of fucked up shit. They accept, uh, they accept things that they just don't want to agree with. They accept things that they just, they're just like, yeah, but I couldn't stop it. I couldn't do anything about it. And so a lot of people spend time, um, you know, meditating, even if they never say it out loud, even if they never think it out loud, even if they never think it personally to themselves. I mean, what do you think all the old people that are, are, are thinking, that are, that are about to die, what do you think all the elders who are, who are at that point in their lives where, where death is like right there, death's knocking at their door, what do you think they're doing? They're trying, they're making sense of this shit. They're making sense of what's possible and what's not, even if they're keeping it to themselves. That's something that everybody that, that, that's about to die is doing. They're trying to make sense of that shit. And on, on a positive note, I'd like to say that I, I think that all of everyone's loved ones um, have gone to places that we don't understand. And we're not talking about heaven or hell. We're talking about 
um, quant. You see, that's that's this is where I fuck up because I genuinely do believe in like quantum uh, physics, and I genuinely do believe that um, no matter no matter what's happened, that everybody who's died uh, has gone towards concepts that they could understand that we couldn't, and that's why they're not here anymore. We can understand why somebody's alive. We can understand why somebody is is doing the things that they're doing relative to what we do. But somebody who's not like us, we don't understand. Somebody who's not like us has to go somewhere else in order to survive, right? I'm not saying this absolutely right. I, I, I'm trying to find that peak where I, I say it and it, over, it goes over your mind. It goes over that part of you that doesn't want to believe in anything positive. It goes over that part of you that's given up on the idea of real life. And, and that's what I'm looking for here. I'm looking for that part, that, that thing that I can say and the way that I can say it that, that, that makes you see it even if it isn't happening. And so don't see me as a con man. Don't see me as trying to trick you. There's something here that you want to believe that you just can't because of things that have happened and I'm trying to get you to believe it again. And it's not, I'm not trying to do anything wrong. I promise, okay? Um, when people die, we still don't understand what's happening. I personally have only vicariously experienced death, but as you can tell, I do a pretty good job of making sense of a lot of things. And and it's, it's that's, I don't know how to interpret that um, without all the negative shit. Um, but I make, I do a pretty good job of, of saying and believing the things that protect the people that I love, right? And um, so there's somebody out there that would say, uh, what are you saying? You're saying I didn't protect the people I love? You're saying this and that? Um, not what I'm saying at all. Uh, what I'm saying is, There's something here that I'm struggling to get around, that I'm struggling to kind of chew through, uh, mine through or, or saw through, whatever this is. And I'm sorry for taking so long to say it, but I think it's worth it. Now, what's happened is somebody who's depressed is, is, is making it hard for me to say this, but pretty much, My mother tells me of my grandmother, right? And I didn't really get to know my grandmother. She only knew me when I was a baby, right? And I got told that she died of an aneurysm. I really don't know what happened. Um, but I know that the way things seem and the way that people are and the way that people disagree, um, that there's a good chance that my grandmother is just off in some other world of existence that I can't interpret, that none of us can interpret. Uh, because that's how me and my family are. We argue with everybody. We disagree with everybody. We, when we don't think something makes sense, we say that. When we don't, when we don't believe what's happening, we don't believe what's happening. That's what we do. So, um, in my opinion, the older you get, the more you can interpret things. The more you experience, the more you can, the more you can expect to experience. And, and we're not talking about people who experience bad things that become traumatized and only expect bad things. We're talking about people that go around and that look at life and they see that everything that's possible. The more you see what is possible, the more becomes possible to you. The more that you can accept that things are possible, the more that those things can happen without you freaking out or saying, what the hell, this, this doesn't make sense. And even I still do that to this day. There are times where for, where, where something, I'll, I'll watch something, I'll look at something, and it'll seem like my, my natural measurement of events something isn't walking at the right speed or or the speed that it was that speed the speed that that dog was walking it shouldn't have made it to that pole in the three seconds that i looked away i still do that i still do that i still get up and i say hold on that fuck, that doesn't make any fucking sense what is that and my brain will sit there and hold until it finds an explanation and that's something that that's something that we do that's something that that i'm trying to practice not doing for the sole sake of of getting to that point where I can just accept it when good things happen. Um, and, and in that, 
there is a, a, sort of, a sort of quantum argument of your loved ones, I think they're still alive. I think that you can interpret how. For the people that have seen their loved ones die, I apologize. For the people that have those images in their head still, I apologize. But for everyone's sake, I believe that everyone's loved ones are still alive, that everyone who has ever been alive is still alive. That everyone who has ever been alive is off somewhere that we can't perceive, that we can't interpret, we can't even think of how it's possible. And that's a true statement. None of us can think of how it's possible. And, and that's how how it works. When we can't think of how, it stops being possible. It stops working. And, and so, I go on, right? And look at where I always am. I make the least sense to people around me. And look at what's always happening. I'm always about to fucking die. Have you, have you not noticed that? Have you not noticed that I make the least sense? I always say the crazy shit. And I'm always about to die. I'm always the closest to it. I'm always the one who could fucking starve to death. I'm always the one who could, who could fucking go missing. I'm always the one who's isolated enough, who's got enough distance, who goes through enough shit. I'm always the one that's closest to death and I make the least sense. And I'm not saying anything wrong. And so I think that there are people out there that at this point in our lives, with the things that I'm saying and with the things that I'm doing, in order for me to be able to say these things, in order for me to be able to do these things, as of now, they think I'm dead. They heard that I died. They, they got news of my death. I believe that there are people that are going through that. I believe that in order for me to get to this point where I believe what I believe so strongly and so openly, that those people had to perceive me as dead because in order to perceive me as alive, it would have corrupted their thinking too much. The same way that if a dog walks from, I mean, you can't see it, but if a dog walks from this tree to this tree in less than two seconds when I look away and look back, my brain sits there and gets stuck. I can't do anything. I sit there and I go, what the fuck? What the fuck is that? Come on, it's making me fucking sound. And I do that, I really do that. I think that there are just some things that some people just won't be able to hold up in order to take care of themselves and, and can't react to the witch hunting uh, syndrome where whenever you're doing things that are too new, too fast, people become paralyzed with fear and they attack you to get rid of you because they don't want to understand it. I heard a story of, of a journalist, not a journalist, a, um, a, a news anchor, not a news anchor, but it was some sort of media producer. It was in one of my high school classes. I heard a story of a guy that just dropped dead out of nowhere. He just dropped dead out of nowhere. That's what I heard. I heard that he just, he was, everything was fine, and he just fucking died. And I look at a picture of him, and I'm like, yeah, that guy, that guy kind of looks like he thinks. That guy kind of looks like he, he dabbles in the shit that I dabble in. Not in the sense that he dabbles in, like, fucking, uh, um quantum science or, or realism or whatever all that shit is it, it, it is more in the sense of like he looks like he's been exposed to the same kind of content that i have in the sense that there are chances that it's likely he came across the right kind of thinking to say bro none of this shit makes any fucking sense and for it to actually click enough to him that he stopped existing here that the next thing that he would have said would have turned us all into monkeys and so the only fucking logical step was for him to die and, and I know that, I know that some of you are going to be like, what about people who died in car accidents? What about people who get kidnapped? What about kids? And I don't have those answers. I don't really know those answers, um, but I can, I can make some educated guesses as of now. And, and you'll have to just forgive me for what I get wrong as I figure it out. People are constantly disagreeing with one another. People are constantly seeing things differently. There's always room for somebody to realize something that if they said it next, it would freak all of us out. 
based on what we're holding on to, the concepts that we're grabbing onto and grasping onto in order to believe in real life or to believe this life. The concepts that we're all accepting are a real thing. The concepts that we say make sense. That anytime somebody decides, you know what, these fully don't fucking make sense, and they put their life into that. I think that we can't interpret them anymore. I think that we can't see them. And so why some people die in car accidents, why there are stories on the news of some random girl getting shot by a gun uh, on accident, I think sometimes we all accept that those things are already happening. Number one, we all accept that those things are already happening. Um, and so they happen. We all, we all already accept them as happening, they happen. I can talk about how death occurs. I think I have in an earlier video, but I'll say it here. Um, one, okay, all, all concepts exist. All of us are concepts, all of us exist. And somebody decides that they exist more than somebody else, right? That's mass, that's how mass starts. That's how mass restriction starts. Now we've got two, one person wants to get rid of another person. So long as that other person in this, in this extensive mass state doesn't agree to that concept of trying to get rid of the other person, it's not fair. So the person that tries to get rid of the other person is the one who gets removed. But if they're both trying to get rid of each other, then they are both within the perfect conceptual agreement to make death possible between them. That because they both want to remove each other, that the images of dying are now possible. The both that those, the, the more that those two choose to see, to think of each other dying, to perceive each other dying, the violence of it, all of that, the both that those two can see those images together in their mind, in their minds, if they can see those images together, if they can see those images on their own enough and give them image and give them mass and continue thinking them, and every time they get mad, they kind of want to kill each other. Every time they get mad, they kind of want the other one to disappear, the other one to die, that it makes that possible between them. And that's how death occurs here. That's how murder happens. That's how all these things happen. And and we talk about kids. Kids don't fucking know better. Kids, kids will kids are smart. Kids act like kids in front of us and then they go off and they watch gore videos in their fucking bedrooms. Kids act like kids in front of us and they go off and they watch porn. Kid kids are kids are here with us. Everything that we believe is possible, they're learning from us. Everything that we think is happening, they're learning that from us. Even if they still have kid faces, even if they're still cute, they're learning everything we think is possible. And so, via us raising them, they are exposed to all of the concepts that we think are just happening. Death, that we think are just happening. Violence. And you know, all the other things I don't, I don't really wanna say right now. This is tough. I feel like I didn't say everything right. But, um... I just think about it like this. Let's say... You're experiencing something. And I, 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 like, to, I like to call this a game, but it's, it's really not a game. It's really, it's really fucked up. It's horrifying. Um... Let's say everything that you can experience has to make enough sense to you to happen. Not just be, it can't just be luck. You can't just be crossing your fingers and hoping and praying. That if your brain can't perceive, not just logically, but, but physically, and we're not talking about blood yet. We're not talking about bones. We're not talking about flesh. We're talking about, about, about scarcity games. We're talking about the likelihood of things just working out for you. The less... The, the, the more that something makes sense to you, the more it can happen, the less something makes sense to you, the less it can happen. And in some conditions of fear, in some conditions after accepting certain principles, and this is where the people who are, are watching this video who have um, pain over loved ones or, or who have trauma, this is where you guys need to leave because I'm gonna say some things that have nothing to do with that and I don't want you to take it to that, to that extent here. Um, 
once you've accepted concepts like death, once you show a kid a video of, of a guy's fucking head getting blown off, once you show a kid a video of a, of a woman uh, getting her fucking head screwed off uh, by, by, fucking, by the mafia, once you show a kid that video, that image is in their head, they physically saw it, and they got told that it was real. Now death, now they're, now they're thinking death. Why can't that happen to me? They may not be saying that, they may not be trying to think it, they're avoiding thinking it, but that's what they're thinking now. They're thinking, why can't that happen to my body? Why can't that happen to me? And so now they're already in the game of death. They're already in the concept game of death, trying to prove that it's not gonna happen to them next. And that when certain things get too close, let's say a car accident, you, you get bumped, or you ever notice this? When a kid falls from a, high, uh, from a height, for the most part, the kid, the kids can get back up and like it's nothing and keep playing so long as we don't overreact. You ever notice that with babies? And y'all think it's cute, but this is a real thing that you need to notice. A baby, sometimes babies, sometimes toddlers, they'll fall and they'll, and they'll land on their fucking faces. And you'll notice that if they go, if you go, oh my gosh, that they'll start crying. But if you just ignore it, they'll just get up. That happens sometimes. That if you just ignore that they fell, they'll get up and move on. But if you go, oh my gosh, you okay? They'll start crying. Now we think it's manipulation, but maybe that's how vulnerable that kid is to our concept of choice. Oh, oh shit, oh. My whole point being, you ever notice how it feels like life is kind of taunting you on a personal level? Like you ever feel like it wasn't that it couldn't happen, it was that you couldn't prove that it made enough sense and so you didn't get it. I think the same thing works with death and that a kid, when they fall, they haven't watched those videos yet, they haven't seen, they haven't seen death, they haven't thought about death. They, even if they see a fucking uh, an action movie where somebody dies, they think of it like action figures. They're not thinking about people. They think action figures blowing up. They think action figures, you take an action figure's arm off, that's what they're thinking. They haven't noticed blood yet. They might be seeing blood on the TV, but they haven't noticed it yet. Not until you give them the story. Not until you say, hey kid, you wanna see a video of someone? You wanna see someone's brains? This is someone's real brains. That's when they start thinking about it. But before they start thinking about it, a kid, they fall, they get back up. They fall even if they even if they get some bruises. They get back up. An adult who's had time to think about death. An adult who's had time to think about all the ways that people can kill themselves. All the ways that people can die. All the ways that people can get hurt. An adult falls, well they gotta think about it some. They gotta, they gotta go, well how come I didn't just fucking break my leg? How come I didn't just sprain my fucking ankle? How, uh, how come I didn't just fucking lose my teeth? An adult has to think about those things. kid can fall, get up, an adult can fall, and for the most part, <laughs> if an adult can't make sense of why they're not in pain, then they're in pain, and that's how I feel about it, even if there's some other shit, you can, you can say, look, all the shit you're gonna say is shit that makes it make sense, every fucking argument you're gonna say right now is shit that makes it make sense, that's just how our bodies are, that's just, come on man, this is how things are when you get older, shit that makes it make sense, I've never broken a bone. And I fear saying that to people because I know some people will try to move towards me breaking a bone next. I cracked my skull when I was younger. But you know, that's because everybody wanted to attack my brain for not being a Christian. That is what that was, that, that pisses me off. Okay, um. My whole point being, you're thinking of physical things. You're not thinking logically, you're traumatized. This is for those people. You're not you're not thinking logically. You're not thinking about what makes sense. You're thinking about what's happened. And I'm telling you right now that we're in a weird state of existence in which things that don't make sense are happening, but because they keep happening, we're convinced that that's just how things are.
Someone you love dies. Someone you you know tells you a story of someone that dies. And that's how it works for most of us, right? We don't ever see our loved ones die. We don't ever see anybody genuinely fucking bleed out of their brain. We don't ever see anybody lose an arm, lose a finger. We don't ever see that shit. We hear a story about it or we pass by a stranger. That's how it is for most of us. And that's what keeps that real. And then, and then when you try to say it, when you try to make an argument for why that's never going to happen, which is what you're supposed to do, because that's survival. That is what survival is. When you try to say, that'll never happen to me or anyone that I love. When you do that, what happens? You feel like someone's calling you retarded. You feel like somebody's looking at you and, and calling you too optimistic. You feel like somebody's looking at you and saying, what a fucking dumbass, he thinks he's special. I think that your loved ones are somewhere that you can't understand. It may not be heaven. It may not be hell. I, I really don't fucking care about heaven or hell. I don't think it's that simple. Um, I think that the loved ones are going where they can understand things and where they can interpret things. I think your loved ones are going where it makes sense to them and you're staying where it makes sense to you. And, and you guys have heard of the Mandela Effect where, you know, we hear that Mandela died and then all of a sudden we hear that he's still alive. And we think of a rational explanation. The dog must have fucking, must have did like a little jog a little bit in that time. He does seem to be walking faster all of a sudden. We think of a reasonable explanation. We think of a way to rationalize it. But the truth may be that for a while there, Mandela being alive just didn't make sense to any of us and then after a while it did. That that's literally all it could be. We watch these movies that tell us about death. We watch these movies where a character's fucking dad died in a car accident. We watch these movies where where people are are, are for no reason getting hurt, where somebody's always got a story about death. This, this death introduces itself, this concept, it introduces itself as there's nothing we can do about it. And when we fully accept that, it happens. Some people will look at me and interpret this as, so he's saying we don't die. He's saying we don't die. He's saying we don't really be worried about death. Some of them might tell me to jump off of a building if I believe that. Some of them might tell me to shoot myself if I don't think I can die. And I would say to them, if you can't interpret me surviving, jumping off of a building, well then for you, I'll die. If you can't interpret me surviving, shooting myself, well then for you, I'll die. If I can't interpret myself surviving off of a building, I'm gonna probably end up on the hospital. That's how it'll be for me, I won't die. I'll, 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 I'll go through a story that makes my existence make sense, my continuity. I'll end up in the hospital. I'll have a broken leg for the first time. I'll, 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 somebody, I'll, somebody will say, um, oh, you're a dumbass, shouldn't have done that. Or maybe even I'll be one of the ones that have to go through the plague, the, the paralyzed, uh, lifestyle, life, lifetimes. Cause those fucking, those sound, but the thing is, you can show this to a paraplegic, you can show this to someone who's paralyzed, and I don't mean to offend them. But the arguments that seem to be holding us back are, what about the things that have happened? And that argument completely ignores and tries to kill the things that can happen and how we affect those things so obviously in front of us. I notice time and time again, whenever I start getting confident in success, whenever I start getting confident in the idea that I've done it, I've proven that it's okay for me to live the life that I want, that nobody can judge me, that nobody can take it away, that nobody has the right to say that it's not fair. And then all of a sudden, I come across the guy in a fucking wheelchair. And it sounds dumb, this sounds dumb. But it happens too often. 
And it's always whenever I'm at that point where I'm like, yeah, you know what? You're right. It's, I, I completely do deserve a good life. There's no reason why I can't. And then I come across a guy in a wheelchair and it, it genuinely happens like that. This isn't like some coincidence. This isn't me adding it up together. This is, these are things, if it's not a guy in a wheelchair, it's somebody who doesn't have an arm. It's not, if it's not somebody who doesn't have an arm, it's, it's um, a homeless person. Every time that I, I, I fully convince myself that I deserve success, I always come across the concept that, and without asking me, says, how come this happened to me then? How come, how come you get to have anything you want before I do? And I can't answer those questions. Not without being an asshole, not without being what we all think celebrities are. Conceited, selfish, entitled. <sighs> but I'll say this, and I do need to say this, I do need to say this. Even if you see me die, I'm not dead. Your loved ones that you have seen die, didn't die. That's, that's real. I don't know how, I, I'm gonna have to go through whatever you, you people do in response to that idea in order to show you what I mean, because I could have said it just now. It's been 30 minutes and I still haven't said it the right way. So uh, I just need to say it how I feel. I don't think we actually die. I think people just can't interpret us anymore. And so they naturally go towards a concept in which they don't have to be exposed to us anymore. And if it's not death, it's gel. If it's not gel, we moved. Yeah, let me ask you this. How many of you have gone through it where, yeah, let's say, let's go back to school, let's go back to high school, right? How many of you have gone through it where you started figuring out social, you started figuring out the social world, you started not caring, you started not being insecure, you started taking yourself serious, you started having your own hobbies, and then right at that point, you moved to a new school. And then at this new school, for no fucking reason, you're the most popular kid ever. In theory, it could be that the people around you just couldn't perceive you being fucking popular all of a sudden. But also, it didn't make sense anymore based on how you were. And so you had to go somewhere else. Compare that to death. Translate that to death. We always look for a physical way to explain things. Because we think that because it's physical, it matters more than everything else. But even physical things follow concept. Blood follows concept. Muscles follow concept. Our explanation for how this works is that electricity from our brain moves our bodies. Electricity that's communicating the logical concept of, of me moving my hand. And we can try to keep making it mechanical. We can try to keep saying, no, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's a thing that doesn't need us to think in order to exist. It's a thing that doesn't need thoughts. But I'm telling you in one way or another, existence is just thoughts. It's just all of our thoughts. You can even look at the animals in, the, in, a, survi in, in a survival setting. They all choose to use strategies. They all choose to use, they, they, a spider chooses to bur burrow, chooses to burrow into the ground and then wait for a predator to pass by. This is an example, this is, a, this is a, a thing I like to use. Imagine that we all started off the same exact creature, but then when we came across the concept of things happening, even if we don't want them to, we all started having survival responses. And some people chose to network, trap things, make sure that they were always the one that could eat and not be eaten. Some people chose to set to become trappers, to, to, to con, to wait, to pray. Some people decided to um, I don't know become deadly. I, all these all these things, all these things that, that define animals.
is that for the animals, there really is no sense of community. For the animals, life is what some of us are plagued into feeling. It's just survival. And the more that they choose to go into that survival, the more that they become an animal that just represents cold-blooded survival. And of course, an animal in the middle of cold-blooded survival, a fucking a mantis on a leaf cannot just suddenly say, you know what guys, I don't believe this anymore. And all the other animals aren't gonna eat them. Of course. But in my opinion, I've been like this for a long time. I've been saying these things for a long time. I've been the way that I am for a long time. The closest I get is is good people, or is, is people getting really close to killing me, getting really close to attacking me, getting really close to hurting me, but knowing that they shouldn't for their own sake. I, I, I've gotten a little close. I've gotten, I've gotten close enough for something. No, no, even then, they still they still want me to swing first. Um, so all I'm saying is we think that's stupid. Life, life is still happening. Life is still just this thing that doesn't care about any of us, and we all need to take care of ourselves and, and, and prey on each other or whatever. And I think, yeah, but you accepted that. You accepted that, and you should be like me. You should be saying, that's fucking retarded, and if that's what this is, that's fucking stupid, because how come, how come I can think it? How come I can think real life? How come I can think none of your loved ones are dead, and, and, and we can do whatever we want? How come that's a thought that I can think? Why is that a thing I can think? And why can I make it make so much fucking sense? E even if you want to say that I haven't explained away some physical, some unsaid physical concept in your brain, how come I can still make it make enough sense that it pisses you off how much sense it makes? How, how, how come I can still make it seem reasonable? People have this fucking weird idea that in order to get to a good life, you gotta die. That 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 they, they hear us say, they hear me say, you know, I think. So you, that's what you said. You said, you said, it, you're gonna go to, you're gonna be able to do whatever you want, but you need to die first. That's what you said, and that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that I don't think I'll ever experience my own death, and even if I do, it's not gonna be in any of the ways that you're thinking because you don't even know what death is. And, and think about that. You don't know it. I'm probably gonna fucking cut this video. I'll post this video, but I'm gonna say it better. I, I, this was a good opportunity for me to think of everything. I'm gonna say everything smoothly. In the next video, I'm gonna say this. You don't know what death is, and that's a defining part of death. We know that that you know, on a physical level, when your body doesn't have blood pumping through it, then it's dead. But we don't know what being dead is. We don't know where the thing that we are goes. We tried to say that we were just consciousness, but that didn't make sense because we have interests outside of survival. We tried to say that, that, um, that we go to heaven or hell. What, what the fuck? I had that. I had that. What, what happened to that? We tried to say that there's a physical thing that happens that marks that you're being dead, but but that our soul, that whatever it is, if we're just physical things, shouldn't exist. If we're just physical things, if, if ideas don't matter, if, if the fact that, if the concepts that we choose don't matter as much as us being physical things, well then we would just be, why would we even care? Here's what I'm gonna say. Defining trait of death is that we don't understand it. We don't know how to perceive it. We can perceive a body being cold, but we cannot perceive what happens to our soul, our consciousness, our, our response. We cannot perceive what's going on with that. And it is our response that is actively choosing what our bodies do. Even in those moments where we can't, in those moments where we lose our choice because physiological survival has become more important, because we don't know what else to think.
that that sponsor, that soul, that consciousness doesn't understand what's going to happen to it when it dies. It may know that its body's going to get cold, that its body's going to decay, but it's, it doesn't know where it's going to go. And that's a defining part of death, is that we ultimately don't understand it. And so that is why I can confidently say that whenever people don't understand you enough is when you're closest to dying. And we have these basic ideas of a guy that just is just a guy that dies. But this idea turns somebody into an NPC in order to make sense. This idea takes the idea of someone having a soul and says that they were just the body of a guy that died and that was the story. This guy's life and death is nothing more than a sentence. What about a guy who just died? All right, I'm gonna just make the second video and now I'm gonna post this too.